So the Miami Grand Prix has been and gone and the thing that we've all been waiting for has finally happened. No, Christian Horn has not been fired by Red Bull Racing, but Lando Norris has his first ever Formula 1 win, meaning he's now tied in wins with some other great drivers, George Russell, Robert Kubica, and of course the legendary Pastor Maldonado. Now while it's obvious that Norris himself had a great race in Miami, how did the rest of the grid fare? Well, that's what we're going through as we go into my best and worst drivers from the 2024 Miami Grand Prix. Starting off then with my fifth worst driver and the person I've actually gone for is Sergio Perez. Now on the surface he's finished fourth and Verstappen is second, however it must be said he only got that fourth place because Carlos Sainz got a penalty and dropped below him. However, for the rest of the race Sergio never really looked like he was in it. Obviously had that big moment in turn one nearly taking out Verstappen and Sainz and just ruining nearly everyone's race. But even so after that just found himself sort of stuck behind people and even when he had those fresh medium tyres at the end stopping under the safety car couldn't close up to Sainz and Carlos actually pulled away ahead of him. Plus he had Lewis on the back of him the whole time and when you're in a Red Bull with the Mercedes pushing you, you know you're not performing that great. So for a rating for Sergio in this one, I've gone with the 4.5. If he'd have made contact at that turn one, that would have been a much lower rating. But because he did get away with it and had a clean race technically, well I'd say that in general it was just a bit below par for him. Then as my fourth worst driver, we go to Valtteri Bottas, someone who to be honest I completely forgot was even in this race. I had a look back through the times and he pretty much spent all of it just down the end of the field, always behind his teammate Joe and only got elevated a couple of positions at the end thanks to the likes of Kevin Magnussen and Lance Stroll getting penalties. For Valtteri in this one it kind of just sums up his season so far, completely irrelevant. For him for a rating he's going to be getting the same as Checo which is 4.5. Obviously it's a bit tricky to judge given that Sauber car is pretty slow, however to still be just at the back pretty much the whole time does kind of sum it up. Then into third worst, and it's one of the drivers I've just mentioned, Lance Stroll. It's not so much a surprise that Lance is in this bottom five, however for him when you look at his Miami race it was less incidents but more so just generally poor performance throughout. Even though he qualified ahead of his teammate Alonso, he's managed to finish eight places behind, wasn't making much progress during the race and in the end was fighting with Alex Albon where he went wide off the track, getting the overtake done having gained an advantage by leaving the track which got him a five second penalty and demoted him even further to a net finish position of 17th, which in an Aston Martin just isn't good enough. But in general, it's just a poor stroll performance. And for that, he's going to be getting a four. It's just below his average rating, but it seems about right for him in this one. Then we get to my second worst driver and someone who I didn't think would be making this list, to be honest, and it's Alex Albon. I think when you look back at his race, it was generally a bit poor, especially for Alex's standards. Early on, Logan Sargent was behind him and only a second or two away, he really wasn't pulling too far away from the American like we've seen in a lot of other races. And then you get to late on where he's defending from a number of cars and has a massive lockup. Not a small one where you can sort of continue and not lose too much. Huge, lost a number of places, had to come into the pits and change tyres I believe and that was just his race done. So you combine that lack of sort of pace that we're used to, combined with the lockup mistake dropping him a number of positions and again it's not a great race for Alex. Rating wise it's going to be a 4 the same as Stroll, it's not any crashes or anything like that, just a bit underwhelming for him and a couple of mistakes in there as well. Then we get to my worst driver for the Miami Grand Prix and it's Kevin Magnussen, someone who seemed to make it their priority to pick up as many penalties as they could across the whole weekend. I think in the end it was 45 seconds of penalties, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was 4 10 second penalties and 1 5 second penalty with 35 of those in the sprint race and 10 seconds worth on the Sunday. Now these race ratings typically are based on Sunday's race, but even when you look at that in isolation, it wasn't great either. In the first half of the race, he was pretty much towards the back of the pack, even behind the likes of Logan Sargent, which meant that halfway through he tried to make a move and just got it all wrong. No space, just sort of sticking a nose in, took Logan out of the race, the Williams was out in the barriers, Magnussen carried on, but his race was ruined, pit stops, front wing, penalty, etc. Not to mention the fact that his teammate Hulkenberg is up there in P11 pushing for the points, it's just really disappointing from K-Mag. So for Kevin for a rating it's going to be 2.5, was slow during the race, took out Logan Sargent, got another penalty, just an overall poor performance. Then we get into my top 5 drivers and in 5th place it's going to be Charles Leclerc. On the whole I'd say he's had a solid race, avoided Sergio Perez at the start and then just generally drove well. 
found himself in third after the safety car and that's exactly where he stayed. In that last stint, I would say as well, it wasn't like Verstappen pulled away loads, but again, it definitely didn't look like Leclerc was ever going to be catching him. The reason why he's in this top five drivers is because you look at the guys behind him, the likes of Piastri and Sainz, and he's managed to beat both of those guys, finish on the podium as well. So third place as a result is really good. So for Charles, he's going to get a 7.5. It's a pretty solid race. And I feel like in this one, a pretty solid drive. Then we get to my fourth best driver and someone who has been waiting for something like this pretty much all season, it's Lewis Hamilton. Started the race down in eighth place, but by the end of it was finishing in sixth. Almost fifth, considering that Sainz got his penalty, and I think it was just by two tenths that he missed that five second drop that Sainz would have had. I think for me in this one, it was mostly about Lewis and his pace in the Mercedes. You look at that first stint and it was probably okay, but that second stint on the medium tires where he was right up the back of Perez and was pulling away from the cars behind him, they were sticking to the cars in front, and I would argue was quicker than Sergio, but obviously it's harder to pass, especially a Red Bull, which he you know is quick in the straights. And if he was in front of the Red Bull, potentially could have finished a little bit further up. And so the reason for him being this fourth best driver is that pace later on. So for Hamilton, he's going to get a 7.5, the same as Leclerc. Again, a really solid drive. In third place, we turn to a driver who's desperately in need of points, and they at least got one. It's Esteban Ocon who finished in 10th place. 10th place may not seem like a lot, especially to Alpine, who last year did pick up points fairly regularly. However, the start of this year has been so abysmal that to come away with a point in this one is absolutely huge gets you off the board from 0-1, to one, automatically jumps you ahead of Williams and Sauber and the Constructors, and so for Ocon to finish in that point scoring position, he's done amazingly well. Not to mention he's beaten one Aston Martin in this one, plus he's beaten a McLaren as well, admittedly some problems for Piastri, but still, it's the result that matters when you're that far down in the standings and all you need is the points. So for Ocon in this one, he's going to be getting an 8. At the end of the day, what really matters here for him is the points, and that's what he's managed to pick up. Then we get on to my second best driver from Miami, and it's going to be Yuki Tsunoda. Tsunoda's had a really great start to the year, and this just continues that. Another seventh place, and he is well clear in that back half in terms of points. In fact, he's actually got more than Lance Stroll now, and has jumped ahead of him in the standings. It's easy to say, obviously, that the safety car helped him out, because, well, it did. However, the really impressive thing for Tsunoda in this one is that after the safety car, he still pulled away from George Russell, who was behind him. So Sonoda in this one, seventh place, is an amazing result for the RB team, and it's going to score him a nine. And then, of course, we get to my best driver from Miami, and there's absolutely no debate here. It's Lando Norris. Now, first things first, yes, he did get a little bit lucky with the safety car, and that's why, as you'll see, this rating is not going to be a 10. Those are reserved for absolutely perfect races. However, for Lando, he did everything he needed to. He looked quick before the safety car. He looked quick, especially after the safety car. They were aggressive with what they did. When Checo came in, they went after Sainz. They didn't just sit there and say, let's just kind of defend against Sergio. And so for Lando to really have that raw pace at the end of the day is what's going to give him this high rating. So for rating for Lando, it's going to be a 9.5. It was a 9 last time out in China for second, and it's 9.5 this time out in Miami. So there you have my race ratings for the 2024 Miami Grand Prix. Lando Norris obviously on top, and Kevin Magnussen right down at the bottom. Then we turn to the averages, and Max Verstappen still well clear in the lead, but with this great result, Lando does jump ahead of the Ferraris. But anyways, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give the video a thumbs up, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take care.